Sorry for the uh, first person shooter thing. I'm not really sure how else to shoot this. Uh, but I want to show how to fix a blade or how I have been making a blade usable uh, after a nail strike. As you can see, this is what the teeth are supposed to normally look like. And when you hit a nail, it pretty often looks like that. Now, in this case, I've got quite a few teeth missing to about, I don't know where it is, somewhere down here. I think down to there. So there's probably about a two foot section. And just for reference, it's it's kind of right at the weld, or it starts at the weld, and I've marked it where these teeth are. And just to give you an idea, so that's what they normally look like. Now this is a Turbo 7, a Woodmiser Turbo 7 blade profile. And that's important because the teeth on a Turbo 7 are bigger than a regular 7. So they send me a gauge and a regular 7 looks like that. So you can see the Turbo 7s are bigger teeth. So it's probably maybe a 16th inch taller. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to regrind this teeth down to a different profile. So it's not too far off from the 7, but I'm going to take it to a 4. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind it down to about there and just remove this material. Now I'm not too concerned in this case with having it perfect because I'm going to keep this blade labeled as such and I'm going to only use it on wood that I don't care so much about. So let me show you. Now I've got the four degree tooth uh, blade on and Woodmiser doesn't recommend this. This is not, um, you're not supposed to do this. They say, and I believe them, that you're going to lose the life of this blade. But let me tell you why I'm okay with that. This blade is 28 bucks, 32 bucks, something like that. Um, I mean, I charge, whenever I hit a blade, I charge the customer for the blade. So I'm covered. I'm just trying to save this. But I mean, we got, let's say, 30 bucks here. This is 140. So, I mean, really, what's the cost? I mean, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. If I can save, uh, you know, five blades, that's covering the cost of that wheel as far as money out of pocket. Now, there's time involved in it, but I, I expect this to last way more, saving way more than five blades. I'm still kind of doing this a little bit new, and I've so this is still kind of a fresh wheel. And I've probably done, um, I don't know, maybe only three or four blades like this. And I just kind of ease into it. All right, so I've got my blade um, mounted in the sharpener. And I'm not trying to go give, you, give you an overview of the sharpener, but just kind of what I'm doing to try to fix this. Now, I try to always start at the weld. Um, this is because I know it's going to take several times around. And uh, it just kind of is an easy marker so I, I can know at least... Um, I mean, when it's gone around full circle and I'm not so worried about how many times it goes around. It's usually like three, four, maybe five times around that I'll try to send it through, but I don't want it to be, I don't want to grind, you know, three and a half times or four and a half times. I'd, I'd like to start or stop about the same, um, at the, about the same spot. So that the teeth are pretty close to the same height. So I start, I put the blade in and I put the weld a couple inches um, to the right and lower it down a little bit and I just kind of go, go slow into it. So with this control you can turn the motor, the oil pump and then this is your speed control. So that controls the speed of the cam and I just kind of go slow and I keep an eye on and I don't want to take too much off because I'm changing the profile, which is not, you're not really supposed to do that. So I'm just trying to take a little bit off at a time. All right, so I just want to show, sorry for the lighting. 
that's the teeth before and that's the teeth after so we still got a ways to go on this um but like i said we just kind of let it go around a few times and uh it'll eventually reprofile it now when you stop halfway through i always turn the speed down and i have to do this every now and then and then wait for the grinding wheel and the oil to kick in and then you can kind of ease ease your speed up and on this I I usually run somewhere between three and four this was the nail strike so it's getting pretty close so now while that's going around and around, I'm just going to be on the setter and setting the next blade. Well, it is actually the previous blade. So uh, normally what I try to do is I try to set it first and I'll set them a little fat and then I'll sharpen it and touch it up. But when I do this, I, uh, I grind it and then I to get try to get the profile, get the bulk of it down, and then I'll set it to, to whatever I'm going for. And... Depending on that, I, I may throw it back on the sharpener just to give it a little clean up again, or I may not. I just kind of look at it and see how it looks. Um, but that kind of just depends on what it looks like. So we'll show you that. But while that's running around, so it's gone around one time. It's been, I don't know, about two, two and a half minutes. So it really doesn't take much um, to, to take it down. And I realize the blade light, the, the wheel's not going to last that long. So, but that's fine because I'm, I'm saving this blade. This blade would otherwise be just trash. So as I save 10 blades, 20 blades, um, you know, it kind of pays for itself. And, you know, we'll certainly, uh, I'm certainly going to be keeping an eye on that wheel and how long that lasts me. Um, they, they say the wheel should last probably, I don't know, three to 500 sharpenings. Um, but like I said, if I get you know a hundred sharpenings that's that's awesome you know with what I'm trying to save these blades it does take a little more time but it's not really that big of a deal so this is the last blade I saved um, and I just set it and I mean when, I, when it's dialed in it it only takes a minute or so maybe less to run it through the setter so come on all right You can kind of see the profile. And typically what I'm really looking for is this tooth, the face being pretty parallel, or sorry, perpendicular to the cut. And it's not that critical, but this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. And obviously we got a left, a right, and a straight. And as I run it through the setter, I keep an eye on these dial indicators to make sure they um, they check out. And basically you want it to fling, to, to kind of settle in between these. This is kind of how I've got it set up. But I'm not really getting into too much detail in this. Um, but as it sets, it checks the tooth. So anyway. So this is where the nail, this is where the nail hit was. And you can see we're already at a pretty good a pretty good profile and we've got a left a right straight still need to fix the set but that's pretty close to being done now ideally i'd like to have it you know change the gullet to where that's freshly ground so i'm gonna run it through once or twice the other thing i do is i put another tag on it um, so I've got these tags. I made a quick little video before about these. Uh, these have been working pretty well for holding it. They're reusable uh, little, they're not like zip ties, but they're kind of like zip ties. And that just holds it, holds the blade in place. Um, these are pretty good to use anyway. And I like that I can throw a little label on it. And I did um, like that one, I don't know how well you can see, but it says F32. So F is for a four degree. And uh, 
I did the 32, it's just like a serial number. So I've got my little book that I've been basically uh, writing down the number of the blade. And I'll put the hour, when I put the blade on, I'll put the hour down. And when I take the blade off, I'll put the hour down. And if there's, if there's anything, I've hit a nail or something, I've been writing on the book. But I found I've also, I've also been writing nail on the blade just to make sure I remember that this is a nail blade. So I'm kind of going back and forth if I want to mess with the book or not. You see the gullet. The tooth is pretty well, the tooth itself is pretty well reshaped. It's just the gullet. I got a little deeper. And you see as it comes out. Come on. And with the BMS 250, you just set a magnet on where you're done. And you can't really see it. There's a little there's a little sensor inside there that shuts the blade off. So when I'm when I'm down to my final pass, I'll just set the magnet on it and that'll shut it off automatically. Got to be careful when you're doing this. The teeth can get discolored and that's tempering it. You do not want that. You want the teeth to be shiny on the front and the back. So you want a good clean you want a good clean grind all the way around. All right, so that's kind of it. That's kind of my process. Um, I've got my next blade on the sharpener. I've got my first blade uh, back on, on the setter. And just to kind of show you, so that's the new profile. So this, these teeth were original teeth. And about here is where they got chipped off. And you can see we've got a fresh profile on it. It's not fully ground, but that's fine. Really the cutting, the, the, the front and the back is the most important. Grinding the gullet, it's kind of important to try to remove little micro cracks, but um, you know, you just kind of be reasonable about it. So we've got a nice sharp. And all of these teeth. I mean, remember it was two feet. Come on. It was about two feet worth. And all those teeth are pretty well back to sharp. 